Hi everyone. I know you guys missed me. I haven't been posting a lot of videos. Um, so what the last video, knife video that I posted was in May. And then I made a shop update. And following that I made a, a video about the knife that I purchased from Aaron Gott. And then nothing came from me. No videos, no updates. But uh, those of you that follow me on Instagram, you know what I was up to and what I was doing. But anyway, um, why haven't I been posting? Well, this year was really, really busy for me at my uh, work. I mean, the place that I work, at my day job. Um, we worked a lot of hours. Uh, I worked over two hours away from home, so there's a lot of driving. Um, also, you guys that uh, follow what's going on or what happened in uh, California, the Paradise Fires, uh, the whole town got wiped out and we had to go and uh, install traffic signals out there, the emergency work. So I had to work Saturday nights, Sunday nights. Uh, there, was, there was time where I worked uh, 14 days straight. Uh, so it's been, it's been a busy year for me. Uh, to, to tell you how busy it was, uh, by November, I made the same amount of money that I made last year, entire year. So basically, right now, I'm two months ahead of what I made last year. And last year was my best year. Uh, so that's how busy we were, or I was. Uh, so that's, that's the biggest reason why you haven't seen any videos from me. Like I said, I worked a lot of nights during the summer and I tried to work on a predator knife during the day, but we had like this heat wave where it was anywhere from 105 to 108 degrees Fahrenheit. And when you work at night and you wake up in a cold air conditioned house, you don't want to go from 75 degrees to 105 degree change, you know, so I, I, I just didn't want to go outside and get baked by the heat. So that's why I didn't work on a knife during the heat wave. Uh, also, you guys seen uh, uh, that I finally got a quench tank and Mr. Barnhart made it for me. But same thing, he works in the same company as I do. So I had to wait on him because he was busy just as I was. So I waited for him to finish the quench tank. So that's another reason why the video got delayed. While making a Predator knife, I made another uh, shop knife. And that knife went to Mr. Barnhart and it was a trade-off for the quench tank that he worked on for me. The other reason why I was kind of slow putting out the videos because I use Adobe Premiere Pro and it crashed on me twice. Uh, I lost one time, like three hours of work. I know I should have hit the save button but you know when you get carried away editing you forget about it but my laptop was slow I ran out of memory so finally I went out and bought a new laptop hopefully now you understand why I haven't posted any videos in over six months um, basically it, it equals out to if I work a lot during my day hours I don't have time to produce any videos for you guys so hopefully you understand so uh, the other questions I get are uh, is this knife gonna be for sale and no it's not because it is Gil Hibbins design for the movie Predator it was Billy's knife Billy the character in the movie and I'm not gonna sell Gil Hibbins design also I'm not gonna be making a sheath for it because I'm not gonna be using it it's just gonna be sitting on the display and right now I'd like to go over a few questions they had for me. Uh, so what software do I use to design my knives and what program I use to edit? Uh, the software that I use the most is uh, pencil and paper and rulers or French curve rulers. That's the best software out there. Uh, but anyway, I, I use uh, DraftSite, but not anymore. Uh, it used to be a free version and now they don't have that version. Now I upgraded my laptop and I can't even down download it. It doesn't exist anymore so I stay away from it. Uh, but paper, pencil, straight ruler and French curve. 
all my designs start that way all of them so uh, what software do I use for editing I use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro or I did use but now since I upgraded my laptop I will be using uh, DaVinci Resolve and why I'm doing that is because Adobe Premiere Pro you have to pay monthly fee I think it's like twenty dollars to use the program I don't put out videos every month or twice a week therefore it would be a waste of money for me to pay every month and not use it that's why I'm switching to uh, DaVinci Resolve and DaVinci Resolve has a free version and even if if I wanted to upgrade to a professional uh, professional uh, program it's only like three hundred dollars so it's doable I would like to know how many hours you spent so far on this knife and how many hours you put in a video to record to get the 12 minute episodes I'm an amateur knife maker myself and I am interested to know let's just say to hand sand the knife from uh, 200 grit to 1200 grit it took me about three hours per side of the uh, knife to hand sand so you do the math that's not including the shaping handle um, editing takes me about three to four hours per 10 minute video it used to take like six to eight but you know you slowly get better at it why don't you make more videos I don't think you understand how much money you could be making doing what you're doing selling the knives alone could pay your mortgage um, I already explained why I'm not making a lot of videos and that's because of my day job that's the priority uh, those of you that don't live in the United States uh, it is difficult probably to explain to you how expensive it is to live in the United States therefore you gotta have a lot of different insurances uh, health insurance all I don't want to go into details but it eats up a lot of your income and if you don't have that those kind of insurances um, if something happened to you you end up on the streets so that's why I I work I go I work at my uh, company which has all those benefits um, some of you think that I I'm some kind of rich famous youtuber that I make a lot of money off of YouTube and it's it's not true I do make some money but not even close to pay my mortgage uh, I know I get a lot of views on some of the videos but those views come from countries that um, don't have expensive ads uh, and let's say the I made a video for Mr. Barnhart, the second cleaver restoration, and uh, for so what, what I had about 360,000 views, I made $600. Okay, and this knife right here, Yakamando knife, I had over 4 million views, and I made $600. 300,000 views and 4 million views paid the same and why is that because people that watch this video were from countries that their ads are very cheap or they don't pay as much per view so just because you guys see some of the videos with millions and millions of views it doesn't mean that I'm driving Lamborghinis and Ferraris Slavic, now that you had your Majestic Forge for over uh, seven or eight months, what are your thoughts? I have a Majestic Forge and I paid $350 for it and I paid $90 for shipping. Uh, it works for me, it's a two burner forge. Uh, I think I once heard Lime Hoffman say that he used it and he considered it to be junk because it did not perform well for his type of work it couldn't um, I guess it, it got burned up 
real quick or it, it doesn't it didn't last long enough versus the forges that he uses so but if you're gonna use it for once a month or twice a month mine is still going strong you know nothing's wrong with it so, but if you're gonna be in a uh, profession where you constantly use it every single day I don't know how it would perform like I said it works well for me I like it it it's way 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 better than using map gas torches you know the yellow bottles that I used prior so yeah I, I like it why I did not upload all parts of the videos at once so this is the first time that I've tried this I usually I upload all the parts of the videos at once and you guys get to see it all at once but I wanted to try something different this time. Uh, the main reason why I didn't do it is because I had parts 1 through 4 edited. And part 5 was not edited because I didn't finish the knife yet. Uh, the, the, the Adobe Premiere Pro crashed twice on me. Uh, I ran out of space on my laptop. So that's why I didn't want to hold you guys up. And I started uploading one video per day or every other day. Um, but it also gave me uh, a chance to see how my videos would perform because sometimes when I upload all videos at once part two will have more views than part one I'm like how is that possible but that's why I wanted to upload one video give it a day then upload the second video uh, I noticed a lot of people just skip through I would upload a video and then within uh, two minutes or so I upload the second part and I see people are already commenting on the second part I'm like you guys didn't even watch the first part it's impossible it's a 12 10 minute video and you guys are already on part two so people were not watching the videos and I wanted to uh, I don't want to say force but I wanted people to actually go back and watch what I posted. I put a lot of effort and time into it and I don't want people to skip through them. So that's the biggest, those are the biggest reasons why I did it in parts. Am I gonna be doing it again like that? Maybe because a lot of people liked it and a lot of people didn't like it and but most of you were anxious to see what the next part's gonna be so I think it was a positive outcome. What is the total cost of this build? Uh, the steel cost me with the shipping, it was around $50, and just rough estimates. Uh, you could go to New Jersey Steel Baron and type in all your um, dimensions and thickness and it'll, it'll give you the price. So $50 for the uh, steel and shipping. The metal guards were about $20 and Ironwood handle was from Iron Ironwoodman from Instagram, and that one cost me forty nine dollars with shipping. Rod coupler was two dollars and twenty five cents, and it was welded for free by my neighbor. Um, so you also need to add the propane, sandpaper, electricity, you know, to the knife build. But that's that's what it cost me. So not, not an expensive knife, knife build, it's just a lot of time went into hand sanding, shaping it, because it's such a long, long knife. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, not expensive. Uh, if you compare it to Legionnaire knife that I made way back, that one, I think the, just the materials alone cost me over $600 so this one was pretty cheap to make but like I said a lot of time went into work itself why don't you lift your roof in your shop so you could stand up straight I am six foot three and my fence is a little bit lower than that uh, the biggest reason why I don't lift the roof in my so-called shop is because I live in apartments and I'm trying to stay under the radar. I don't want people to know that I make knives here. It's a hobby, so no biggie, but 
I just don't want people walking by to see a roof sticking over the fence. It would be an eyesore, so that's why nobody knows I'm here. Little stealth shop. How did you know uh, that the end cap was going to fit in the right place? Because uh, I just did a Bowie, but I made the separate screw cap and ended up epoxying it. Because I was afraid that after time the wood would change and the cap would not fit right. Uh, I use stabilized wood, so this way it doesn't expand or con contrast on me. Uh, also, I I finished the whole handle, and I very waited till the very last minute to screw on the end cap, and then I saw what the angle was, the way it screwed on, and I uh, sanded it down with a, a disc grinder to accommodate the same, so it would be parallel with the uh, with the end cap, and that's how I did it. I cringed a little bit when you started to baton those dead trees. We get it. This knife is piece of art. It's incredible, robust, and capable of being used as a tool, but still, why punish it? So, after I make every knife, uh, I get a lot of comments. We're tired of seeing you cut the paper to show the sharpness. Why, why don't you do some chopping? Uh, so I went out, bought some pumpkins, and chopped those up, sliced them like butter. Um, and then at the end, I wanted to stick the knife onto the tree stump, and it didn't stick. Because the, the way the angle and uh, the grain of the wood. So I'm like, alright, second time, <laughs> it didn't stick. So when finally on the third time it stuck, I'm like, well, mine as well, I mean... Let's see what this thing can do. I already put three scratches into it. So I start chopping and I'm like, all right, let's go find some uh, broken branches. And that's what you saw. Uh, but yeah, I had to go back and hand sand, take the knife apart. And uh, after chopping the pumpkins, I uh, wiped it down real quick, but left it dirty. Brought it home, threw it on a... Uh, up top over my monitor and forgot about it because I was busy editing videos for you guys and I left it sitting there for like two or three weeks and then finally uh, when I looked at it I, I saw rust and I had to go back and re take it apart uh, hand sand it down I, I, I took I took it down to 800 grit again and sanded it and then uh, went up to 1200 grit. Um, the other thing that uh, after chopping uh, the handle bent and it bent so much that you could fit a uh, piece of paper in between the uh, guard and uh, wood handle so because I did not heat treat uh, the tang it, it bent while chopping it's not a comfortable uh, handle to chop I almost had a blister but if you're just holding the, the knife in your hand it's fine but once you start using it it becomes very uncomfortable now I think that the tang bent because I did not bed the handles if I glued the handles then there would be no movement inside so I think that's the biggest reason why the, the handle or the tank bent but if you bed your uh, tank then you'll be fine as you guys saw the blade warped in two areas and I tried to straighten it out right out of the oil quench and got it really close and then I watched as it was cooling down it warped again I saw the same thing in Alex Steel video I forgot either it was it was a sword or an, another one he was making and he took it out he it, it warped he straightened it out he's like oh it's good and he he put it in the vise and just watched it warp as it cooled down and the same thing happened to me so I tried to 
uh, straighten it out while annealing it or I mean tempering and uh, got it close but it, it still has warps in it but I still went through with it to make a video for the YouTube and for you guys to see and since I'm not going to be selling it uh, I don't mind it being a little bit uh, bent or warped so yeah it's a little bit warped but I still love it balls of steel um, so this is just one piece second piece this is just from one side of grinding three bevels on the knife and both of these came in at six ounces that's how much was ground off from uh, six bevels on one knife the whole knife came in at Two and a half pounds. That's how heavy it is. So you notice I darkened the metal pieces. So after uh, hand sanding everything, everything everything was rusted, all the pieces. So I took it all apart, hand sanded this, hand sanded that, and I didn't want this to rust. So what I did, I, I put in a ferric chloride and let it etch, get dark. And also I wanted to see the difference, what it what would happen. Because this is a uh, 40, no, forgot. I forgot what steel this is, I'll, I'll put it in the video. This is 5160 leaf spring and this is 1075. And I wanted to see how different they would what color they would etch and 5160 etched the darkest um, for some reason this part right here didn't want to etch and I cleaned it hand sanded it I don't know but the end cap didn't want to etch either and it looked like sandblasted uh, it had a sandblasted finish, so what I did, I took the I took the perma blue, and I uh, blued everything, so they they look as if they were identical color, so everything matches. I kind of like this finish more. Also, this is an inch and a half bar. Remember, I make, made a Yakamando knife out of this. You guys been asking how much it weighs. Um, so, I started. I started with a six and a half pound bar. Once it was cut to length. So six and a half pound, and I finished with, uh, what is it, one and a half pounds. So I took off five pounds off of the whole bar to get this. So yep, yeah, that's how much it weighs, uh, one and a half pounds. I think that sums it up. I want to talk to you guys about something. Um, when I tell you guys to go, uh, alright, when you guys ask me, hey, where have you been hiding? Uh, I haven't seen you. Are you dead? Um, those of you that follow me on Instagram, you guys know what I'm doing, where I'm working, uh, what knife I'm working on. Because I get a lot of comments, hey, when, when's your next video? When are you going to post another video? What knife are you working on? It's like, I, I put everything out there. You guys... You guys know I update almost on a daily basis what I'm doing. So when I tell you when I tell you guys to go follow me, not follow, go go check out my Instagram page or YouTube page. I don't mean all right, this might might sound a little bit weird or different from everybody else, but I'm not here for you two guys to subscribe to my channel or go I'm not here for your follows on my Instagram. 
I post stuff on Instagram and YouTube and it's your choice to follow or not but I provide you with all the details where I'm at what I'm doing uh, but I don't want to sound like everybody else on, on on YouTube and Instagram hey go subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up uh, hit that like button that's up to you I'm not I'm not here for the numbers I know I'm coming up to 400,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel and I had a, a person reach out to me on Instagram and he wanted to have lengthy discussions and what you doing, what you been up to, how you been and, and I'm busy you know I I try to reply to everybody but maybe I didn't reply back uh, soon enough and he got mad upset and he said that I'm arrogant I think too highly of myself uh, and I had to explain to him listen you're not the only one who writes to me I had to screenshot all the different people that write to me and and send them those pictures and like look, look you're not the only one that has questions you know and the more followers, the more subscribers I have, the list just keeps growing exponentially. And he he calmed down, uh, but now he's a knife maker. And recently he contacted me and said, "Hey, uh, how do you manage your time? Because I'm having uh, family problems at home. It's hard to find time to uh, to work." to make knives and to spend time with family especially with wife and I, uh, I think it was the wife issues that came up and I told him work comes first uh, second comes knife making for us for me in my family and family third and the reason I say that is because my wife and I have, have we have a goal that we want to accomplish right now uh, so that's why knife making comes after work and family's third right now at this moment and she understands that and uh, I appreciate my wife is very supportive and I explained that to him this is these are the steps or categories or the priorities that I I set my life at right now so I said you have to figure out what your priorities are for you but anyway he he finally understands that it's it's not easy to reply to everybody to be available at all times because you know we all have our own lives we're busy doing our things but anyway uh, like I said if you guys think that I'm some famous rich YouTuber, <laughs> I'm not. I'm just a regular guy like you guys. Um, so don't think too highly of me. I know some people of you write, oh, you're the god, you're the Thor or whatever. Uh, I'm just a guy that wants to have a good life, works hard, and uh, if I don't reply back to you fast enough don't 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 judge me um, but if like that person said hey you have a lot of subscribers and followers that's why you you, you think too highly of yourself um, those numbers don't equal to reality if I post a video on YouTube the predator knife all right what it's been out for a, a month now what I have 60,000 views per video roughly and I'm coming up to 400,000 subscribers so where are those views you see guys what I'm trying to say uh, those subscribers don't don't mean anything they don't they're not real 
uh, the followers on Instagram. I'm coming up to 13,000 followers on Instagram. So when I post a picture on Instagram, not for fame, whatever, I'm just I'm just putting it out for you guys to see my accomplishments. Uh, I'm not getting 13,000 likes, you know. So where are all those people? Uh, I'm not saying that I'm butt hurt or something because I'm not getting those likes or I'm not getting those views. No, I'm just trying to show you guys that don't let the numbers confuse you just because somebody has a lot of view, uh, subscribers and followers not all of those followers and subscri subscribers are there to support that channel yes I'm getting a lot of views but those views are coming not from my subscribers and I'm 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 happy I'm getting those views you know it, it's it's nice but some videos I'm getting 5% views from my subscribers and when the YouTube came out with the page that you could look up at the statistics on for each video like geographically who's watching it what age group group uh, male or female what country uh, how many subscribers watched your video um, what's the the view duration per each video opened up my eyes to a lot of things and I saw that like I said some videos were getting five percent of my subscribers uh, five percent of subscribers watched those videos and I was like wow I thought I was getting all those views from my subscribers and it's a big big no and I asked Jeremy with Simple Little Life I said Jeremy how come we're not getting all those views from our subscribers and he said his theory was that people subscribe to a lot of different channels and once those channels upload some they they sit back and they look oh I'll watch this today yeah I'm not gonna watch the thumbnail doesn't look that good I'll watch this video yeah I'll watch this I'll skip all those those don't look interesting today and I think I agree with him um, when I follow somebody, I follow because I want to watch their videos. So if, if it comes to a point where I don't have time or I'm, you know, yeah. If, if I don't have the time to watch their videos, I'll unsubscribe. I don't want to give those people imaginary numbers of subscribers or whatever. So that's just my point of view. So like I said, guys, if you... Uh, hear me say oh you could go follow me on Instagram I don't mean to go and click the follow button I don't mean to go subscribe button on YouTube I'm just letting you know that this is where you could find uh, pictures on Instagram videos on YouTube um, if you choose to follow and subscribe that's that's your choice I'm not here to beg you uh, you guys are all mature people what I'm trying to say is basically if, if I don't get back to you fast enough or soon enough that uh, you might think is reasonable don't don't judge me I I work crazy hours I work swing shift uh, for for instance yesterday uh, I got up at like 444 I worked half a day I finished working at like 11 or 12 and uh, drove home for an hour I worked on the knife the predator knife I finished hand sanding all that stuff and then uh, I tried to sleep for about an hour couldn't fall asleep and went back to work at 8 o'clock in the evening I started working again I worked a full night came home uh, I was supposed to work today uh, at you know night shift but we got shut down because of the rain so now I won't be able to fall asleep because my body switched to night shift so I'm not gonna probably go to bed till like 12 so now I gotta work tomorrow night and it's it's like I work days night night day night and it, it just messes you up you know so if I don't get back to you 
It's not because I don't want to. I do my best to reply to everybody because I know what it feels like when uh, a big time knife maker replies back to you. When I had questions for Aaron Goth, he replied and that felt good. Ecom Knives, Jeremy with Simple Little Lives, uh, Life. Um, Nick Wheeler, I, I've i asked those guys questions and they got back to me and maybe it took a day or two later but they all replied back and I understand what it's like to be at the beginning of the stages of uh, knife making and having a question and don't know where to get that answer so like I said I'm not a pro but I'm here for you guys I'll, I'll I'll reply back to you when I can and if I don't know the answer I don't know the answer I don't know the answers to everything so hopefully I made myself clear answering your questions going over all the details I wish you the best Merry Christmas Happy New Year I have uh, three knives that I two daggers and one other knife that I'm work I mean I drew it up so it's sitting on the wall hanging on the wall it's uh, just a matter of getting the right material and the steel and uh, the handle materials it's not going to be cheap to build them it's going to be expensive for me but I'll let you guys see it next year so take care stay happy be safe Adiós.